everyone, welcome back to Relax with Animal Facts. I am Steph Wolf, and today I am going to be learning with you about our furry, scaly, or possibly even slimy friends. And in today's case, it is going to be a hairy friend of ours because we are covering the oh so wonderful bison. This is a very special listener episode dedicated to Rowan and Tina, who wrote in and requested this mighty creature. For all of the resources and how to write into the show, those things will be in the description and at the end of the episode. And if you want exclusive podcast episodes, you can go to the Relax with Animal Facts Patreon page that is also in the description. Now, as we are preparing to go see some mighty bison, I ask only two things from you. One is to make sure that your shoelaces are double knotted for our trip, and the other is to play the part of jello. If you are carrying any tension in your head, neck, legs, whatever it be, we don't really need all of that where we are going. So do your best to relax and let your mind journey with me into the plains where we are going to get up close and personal with the bison. So as we are walking and stepping over the tawny, blondish grass, the first thing that you may notice about this creature is that they are big. The bison is infamous in a sense because they are number one in terms of size in North America. They are North America's largest mammal. And though we use the word buffalo interchangeably with bison, it is important to know that they are distinct from one another. So while our semantic usage of the term buffalo and bison might refer to the same things in our heads, biologically that is not the case. So the bison is either of two different species of ox-like grazing mammals that comprise the genus bison. If you've listened to some of the previous podcasts in which we would covered creatures like the highland cow, you might be able to guess the family. They are part of the Bovidae family. These two species are the American bison and the European bison. Today we are beholding the American bison, which is also known as the Plains Buffalo, but we could have gone to perhaps somewhere like Switzerland to look at the European bison. So when we refer to the American bison as the buffalo or plains buffalo, as we learned earlier, they are distinct from true buffalo, that being those of the cape buffalo and the water buffalo. But it is a term that seems to be culturally relevant, as that is what they are called in America. So if I ever do slip up and call them the buffalo, you know why. The American bison specifically which has the scientific name bison bison, is going to be different from domestic cattle or oxen in a few different ways. It has a very large and heavy head. They have this large hump at their shoulders that is quite pronounced, heavy forequarters, and they will sport 14 ribs instead of the 13 that are found in cattle. And the oh-so-wise American bison will oftentimes form a beard through those long hairs on their neck, head, and shoulders. This is what gives them that long beard-like figure. There have been cases in which a white bison is born, though they are exceptionally rare. Both male and female bisons have horns, and so you cannot tell them apart just by whether they have horns or not. In both cases, the horns are short and curved upwards, but the female will often have a smaller pair of horns. While these horns do not necessarily betray male or female, they do tell something about age. The horns will begin to come out around two years old, 
And then they go into a stage known as spike horn. This is where the horns will develop this angle, specifically about 45 degrees. And this will last until they are about 4 years old. While they initially start with that very dark black color, they will turn gray over time as they age. Now, if you are a real good detective, you might be able to tell whether some of the bison in this herd are older than others by how blunt and short the tips of their horns are. After about the age of eight, those spikes will start to wear down and become more blunted and even continuously shorten. Now let us get back to their sheer size for a moment. They look as though they shake the very earth upon which they tread, and they do not bear the title of North America's largest mammal for no reason. A typical bull is between 11 and 12 and a half feet long. That is about 335 to 381 centimeters. The cows, which are the female version of the bison, are going to be slightly smaller, being about 7.5 to 10.5 feet long. That's about 228 to 320 centimeters. They will often be standing at just about 6 feet tall at the shoulder, again 183 centimeters for my UK listeners. So these creatures are quite stocky and compact. The larger of the subspecies of bison will weigh more than 2,000 pounds, which is just over 900 kilos. So we can see how they got this gold medal of being the largest mammal in North America. But just because they are large doesn't mean they are, by any stretch of the imagination, slow or clumsy. They can run up to 40 miles per hour, about 64 kilometers per hour. They can jump up to 6 feet vertically and very quickly pivot to combat predators. This is an agile creature. A 6 feet vertical jump is impressive enough, but when you are lifting 2,000 pounds off of the ground, that is a monumental feat. With quick and sharp turns, this absolute behemoth makes a formidable piece of prey for any sort of wild animal attempting to make a meal out of them. One unique thing about the bison is that it does not burn extra calories in order to stay warm during those below zero temperatures. Those temperatures that are so indicative of Canadian weather and as a Canadian, I do not mean to brag, but the bison is Manitoba's official mammal. But moving on, the reason they can stay so warm is, of course, because of their abundantly thick coats. It provides them with really solid insulation from the harsh winter weather that is comprised of both a thick hide and two layers of hair. I think it might be helpful to actually define that word hide. We hear so many times that animals have thick hides, but what does that really mean? It is quite simply a more fancy way of referring to skin. It was imported from a German word, which also means skin. So when we say that they protect themselves and are insulated by two layers of hair and a thick hide, it means two layers of hair and thick skin. The coarse outer layer of hair will serve as protection from the cold and also from moisture, while that inner layer of hair will consist of very fine fibers. This will create a unique sort of insulation that traps air and warmth. They have a seriously awesome natural jacket. Just so we understand just how much hair they have, they have approximately 10 times more hair per square inch than domestic cattle do. That is per square inch. So they are some of the hairiest creatures I can think of. Their coats are so effective against cold and moisture that snow will remain on the top of their backs without melting. 
they will assume a very interesting posture on certain days. And these days will be particularly frigid ones. With a distinctive harsh wind, they will face the wind directly and place their heads down, which presents the thickest part of their coat to really break and take the edge off of this prairie cold. So they know exactly how to brace for those fierce winds with their organic jackets. The bison, like every other animal we have covered on this show, is an integral part of their ecosystem. They are referred to even as a keystone species because of how vital a role they play in maintaining their respective ecosystem. They will graze native grass while their hooves turn up the soil and their droppings fertilize it. So just by their very existence, they play the role of lawnmower, plow, and fertilizer. They even have significant impacts on insect populations when they choose to roll around and wallow in the grass. Their 2,000-pound hairy bodies enjoying the prairie grass has the potential to change and balance the tall and short grass, in turn affecting those insect populations. Prairie dogs, for example, and other animals will prefer to live in areas that are grazed by the bison. This is because they can spot predators more easily. So where some predators go is even affected by their eating habits. One endangered species of butterfly is now becoming more abundant because of the reintroduction of bison into their range. Their grazing habits and all that they do has created conditions that are more favorable for the plants these butterflies need as food. And so big props to the bison. They play such an integral part and all they are doing is ingesting grass and rolling around on the ground but in so doing, play so many roles at once. So as we are looking at some of these bisons grazing and rolling around, we can judge their mood by their tail. Right now, all of the bisons have their tails hanging down and swaying naturally, and that means that the bison is calm. But if we were to see that tail suddenly stand straight up, this is a sign that the bison is ready to charge. But while these may be telltale signs of their mood, at least usually, we have to understand that the bison is a creature that can act unpredictably, at least to us. Because of their fierce speed and their size, things can change on a dime. And with a creature that is 2,000 pounds, 11 feet long, that is something that is better left unexperienced, or rather unfamiliar. It is great for nature documentaries and photographers, but not for people if they are too close. So while today we are getting close and personal, in the outside world if you were to do some sort of trip to see these guys, they are best adored at a distance. So you may have noticed that the entire time while we have been looking at some of these bison, they have been eating. And if we were to continuously watch them for another 8 hours, they would likely still be doing the same thing. They will typically forage for about 9 to 11 hours every day, eating grasses, weeds, and other sorts of leafy plants. This is the part in which we ought to be grateful. A creature like this, if it were carnivorous, would be absolutely terrifying. But what is great for us is that they only want salad. And as one is eating and another is wallowing, as they call it, or rolling around in the ground, the reason they roll in the dirt like that is to stop biting flies and even help to shed some fur. Some male bison will also choose to roll around to leave their scent during mating season or to display their strength. I believe that this article left out the fact that it might simply be fun. It certainly looks like fun to me, but maybe that says more about me than it does the bison. In terms of their senses, they do not have the best vision. 
They have pretty poor eyesight, but they do have very good senses of smell and of hearing to make up for it. The cows, or the female bison and the baby bison known as calves, will normally communicate using these pig-like grunts and the bull will really use those singing skills in order to let out large grunts that can be heard bellowing across long distances. Now, in the wild, a bison can live up to 20 years of age. The average lifespan, though, is about 10 to 20. Within that 20-year lifespan, Female bison will normally become reproductively successful at the age of two and only have one baby at a time. For males, however, the prime breeding age is later, which is about six to ten years. So the reproductive age of males is about three to five times higher than the females. I'm not sure if that says something of the maturity of the female and the male bulls or if it has something only to do with reproductive capacity. In humans, for example, women are said to be fully developed or to have their brains fully developed around the age of 22. And with men, I believe we are somewhere in the range of 37. But all joking aside, the males and females will have some pretty different ages when they mate. You may have heard the term red dog before, and this term is one that is used maybe endearingly in talking about the baby bison. Bison calves tend to be born from around late March until May and are orange or reddish in color. This earned them the nickname red dogs. But in a few months, the red dog becomes more of a brown dog, which does not have so much of a ring to it. They will slowly become dark brown, and this characteristic shoulder hump and the horns will begin to grow. And that characteristic hump is not just superfluous. It does have a function. That hump is composed of solid muscle and supported by long vertebrae. What it allows this creature to do is to plow its head through snow if need be. So it is not just a style choice, though it looks great, but they use it as a shovel to get to that sweet grass underneath. Fossils and accounts from early travelers shows that Yellowstone National Park is the only place in the United States where bison have lived continuously for a very long time. And in fact, the herd in Yellowstone is one of the few that remains completely genetically free from cattle genes, which means that they were free from interbreeding with other cattle species. Yellowstone sounds like a wonderful place, and I hope to visit it one day. There are about 30,000 bison that are managed for conservation in private and public herds, but most of the 500,000 or so bison nationwide are raised instead as livestock on ranches. And so their population is indeed decently sized, certainly better than what it was after masses of hunting. So they do have a fairly large population. So in North America, there are a great number of bison, which is something that is great. And for our final fact of the episode, we are going to talk about the name bison. What does it mean and where does it come from? The word bison was really coined in the 1600s and means European wild ox. It comes from the French word bison, or I suppose in French it would be bison, and that comes from the Latin word for wild ox. Now this goes through a ton of different transformations, ending at an Old English or Middle English word, but is not widely attested to after this. And so etymologists, not to be mixed up with entomologists, which study insects, but etymologists postulate that it may be of some kind of Baltic or Slavic origin. 
and meant the stinking animal in reference to its scent while rutting. As we have seen many other times on the show, sometimes the derivations of words are not as neat and tidy as we would like, and apparently not as neat and tidy as they believed the bison to be, according to this etymology. And now let us move on to the review portion of the episode. This review was written by Alice OMG1111, that's four ones, who wrote all the way from the United States of America. And Alice writes, It is so calming and it helps me go to sleep so fast. But do you think you could move on to the facts already and stop saying so much other stuff in the beginning? The last episode I listened to, there were eight minutes of only blabbering about other stuff. But otherwise, the podcast is really good, so you get five stars. And could you do an episode on axolotls? By the way, I'm 11 and from the US. Thanks, Alice. Thank you, Alice, for the review and for the kind words and for the very important feedback. I'm so happy that the show is calming for you and helps you get to sleep. In response to your review and to many others that I have seen up to this point, I have tried this episode to really move everything to the end if I can. I hope that today's episode can be the standard for the show if, of course, everybody enjoys it. I am always trying to make the podcast better. I don't mind moving everything else to the end, and if Alice or anyone else listening prefers this way, please reach out, let me know, comment on some kind of Instagram post or something. But in regards to the 8 minutes of blabbering about other stuff, that is how a lot of the early episodes are. I had no idea what people enjoyed and I didn't run any ads or anything. So I just thought that I was doing what you guys like. But as I found out soon, it was not the way to go. And so some of those older episodes definitely have longer intros. And I wish I could somehow go back and edit them out, but that would simply take forever. But from going forward... I am dedicated to making the show more enjoyable for each of you because this show is for you and your feedback means the world. If you want to leave a review like Alice did, you can even leave your animal request in the review from what I have seen many times. They help the show grow and they help it get better. If you want your very own podcast episode, you can send in your request by sending a message to Relax with Animal Facts on Instagram by going to relaxwithanimalfacts.com and clicking on the Animal Request tab, or you could always send an email directly to relaxwithanimalfacts at gmail.com. You can write whatever you'd like and ensure you leave an animal request and I try to respond to each and every one of you. Again, there is a Patreon page where we have exclusive mythical and extinct animals that we cover. So if you want access to those exclusive episodes, you can go to the Patreon link in the description or just search up patreon.com slash relax with animal facts. What an amazing creature we covered today. The largest mammal in North America, quite the hairy and hefty behemoth. I hope that you have all enjoyed this journey with me into the plains of North America, and I hope you will join me on the next podcast episode with the next animal. Take care.